Welcome to Kencho Quest. We're here at Legoland Malaysia. We're going to share tips for visiting Legoland. This is a thorough guide to Legoland Malaysia, so I'll leave timestamps in the description box below if you want to hop on ahead to a particular section. We're going to tell you how to prepare for your visit, what to bring, and what you can do at Legoland with a one-year-old, four-year-old, and eight-year-old. Let's go have some fun. Plan your visit. Legoland Malaysia Resort consists of Legoland Park, Legoland Water Park, Sea Life Aquarium, and Legoland Hotel. To start with, which type of ticket do you want to get? A one-day ticket or an annual pass that allows you to enter one, two, or three of the parks? If you're only coming for one day, I highly recommend only visiting one of the parks because you won't even see it all in one day. Although you could combine sea life, as that's a fairly quick walkthrough. This video is particularly about Legoland theme park. We'll make a separate video when we visit the Lego water park. At Legoland Malaysia, you can purchase tickets at the counters near the entrance or purchase them ahead of time online. Children under three are free. Present an ID or passport to verify their age. Our family opted for triple park annual passes since we're staying in Johor for a few months and we want to be able to visit the parks multiple times. The triple park pass also provides discounts at the restaurants, gift shops, and free parking. When choosing which day to visit, avoid holidays, including school holidays for both Malaysia and Singapore. Otherwise, expect it to be crowded. Check the weather before your visit. During lightning storms, outdoor attractions are closed, but there are fun things to do inside on rainy days. Before your visit, measure your child's height. Check the website under Plan Your Visit for Resort Guide and Height Restrictions to see which rides they'll be able to go on. Most Legoland locations other than Malaysia also have an app which allows you to find rides based upon your child's age and height. Facilities at Legoland. There's a checkpoint at the entrance where they check vaccination status and search bags. Guests of 18 years and above are required to be fully vaccinated. Parking is located in zone one and two. It normally costs 10 ringgit per entry. With the annual triple park pass, you get free parking. Take the parking stub to guest services for validation. There is also a lost and found in guest services in case you lose your toddler's shoe like we did. Next to guest services, there is an ATM inside the mini market. There are lockers near the mini market at the beginning as well as other locations in the park. Some rides also have cubbies where you can leave a small bag or hats. There are prayer rooms located throughout the park. There are restrooms at the entrance and throughout the park, especially near the restaurants. And they're Lego themed. In the imagination section of the park, there's a baby care room. It has changing tables, family restrooms, there's a room for preparing baby bottles, and a feeding room with two gliding chairs and a crib. There are also small tables where babies can eat. Within Lego City, there's a first aid station. There was a sign on the door with a phone number to call for assistance. You can either wear your baby, like I am, in a mumsy or a carrier. You can bring your own stroller, or you can rent a stroller here. We're going to give that a try today, since our four-year-old says she's too tired to walk. They have single stroller for 56, double stroller for 76. There's also wheelchairs available. We just parked our stroller, and I realized that the tag on the back says our name, so we know which stroller to take when we leave. I wouldn't leave valuables out here in the parking, so good thing we have our small backpack to take with us. Places to eat. The cafe is located at the beginning. Asian Deli is located in Lego Technic, but it appears to be closed currently. King's Grill is located in Lego Kingdoms. It's one of our favorite places to eat, and we get a discount with our Triple Park annual passes. It's right next to the castle. Pizza Mania is located in Imagination and is closed at this time. It's located right next to the baby care room, which is currently open. Burger Junction is located in Land of Adventure, right next to Dino Island. Market Restaurant, located in Lego City, is another one of our favorites.
First you choose what you'd like to order, then pay, then you take your tickets and receipt to the particular counter. Some have longer waits and you'll be given a buzzer to come back for your food. The rice is a Lego shape. Oh. oh, yeah, I didn't realize that's actually like Legos. Yours is a uh, Lego shape too, but it kind of fell apart. We enjoy the snack corner at City Stage for caramel popcorn, drinks, and popsicles. One tip for eating is if you have the annual passes that allow you to leave and re-enter the park, is you can come to Ben's Independent Grocer, which is right outside Legoland. They have good food, big portions, and very reasonably priced. Bring with you. We like to bring a small backpack rather than a bulky diaper bag. Some rides have an area to leave a small bag, plus it's nice not being weighted down while walking around the park all day. We bring our kids insulated water bottles, we bring our sun hats, and sunscreen would be a good idea too. Insect repellent stickers and anti-bug balm. The mosquitoes can be really bad here after it rains. Wet wipes and tissues for cleaning hands, Snacks for our youngest. Outside food is prohibited except for babies and when medically necessary. A diaper clutch with basics for changing my toddler's diaper. His plate for meal times is in this bag. And a change of clothes for our two youngest. If you come on a rainy day like we did, bring your own umbrella or you could buy one at the gift shop. I recommend a little more compact one as this is kind of big to carry around. That one's cute. Entertainment. Legoland Theme Park is organized into sections. The first one is called The Beginning. This is where many of the customer service facilities are located. There's also a stage, the cafe, and gift shops. If you're going to buy some souvenirs, some Legos for your kids, I recommend doing that very last before you exit the park so you're not stuck lugging them around with you all day long. Now let's go ride some rides. The rides have minimum age and height restrictions, so you're going to want to check to make sure that your child meets both of those. For instance, we have a one-year-old who's 81 centimeters tall, a four-year-old who's about 101 centimeters tall, and an eight-year-old who's 122 centimeters tall. Our middle child meets the four-year-old requirement for quite a few of the rides, However, she's not quite tall enough, so you're going to have to look at both of those. And these are subject to change. We're just sharing with you how it was when we visited. First up is Lego Technic. For Technic Twister, riders must be at least 105 centimeters tall and four years old, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 120 centimeters tall and six years old. For the Great Lego Race, riders must be at least 105 centimeters tall and four years old, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 130 centimeters tall and eight years old. AquaZone Wave Racers was closed for maintenance at the time of our visit. You can check on the website which dates certain rides are going to be closed for maintenance so you don't come and be disappointed that you can't ride your favorite ride. There are also indoor activities in LEGO Technic including Mindstorms and LEGO Academy. Oh, okay. Our angle is 45. We need to change it to 90, Pasho. So we need to change that to 90. <laughs> Rebuild the World is an indoor area for building with Legos. 30 minute increments are allowed. It's a great place for escaping the rain. Use your creativity to build whatever you want. It's probably intended for a bit older, but our one year old really enjoys it as well. <laughs> the wheels. Mm -hmm. Hard to find the right parts, huh? Yeah. That's a cool little racer you got there. 
Miniland is located in the center of the park and is accessible from the other sections. This is where you'll find mega recreations of many famous sites in Southeast Asia. Hey, these towers look familiar. It's hard to tell that these are made from Legos unless you look really close. The next section is Lego Kingdoms. Our younger two kids love the Forestman's Hideout Playground. It's a great place for them to play while our older son rides the nearby rides. Right across from the playground is Dragon's Apprentice, which is a small roller coaster. Riders must be at least 105 centimeters tall and four years old, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 120 centimeters tall and six years old. The Dragon is a bigger roller coaster, which you enter inside the castle. You can see it from the playground. Riders must be at least 105 centimeters tall and four years old, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 130 centimeters tall and eight years old. For the Royal Joust, riders must be between 105 and 150 centimeters tall and four to 12 years old. It's a gentle ride, so I wish our four-year-old could have ridden it. She would have enjoyed it more than her eight-year-old did. Also in Kingdoms is Merlin's Challenge, which is similar to a carnival ride, but not as fast. Riders must be at least 105 centimeters tall and four years old. To ride alone, they must be at least 130 centimeters tall and eight years old. The next section is Imagination. First up is Kids Power Tower. Riders must be at least 95 centimeters tall and three years old. To ride alone, they must be at least 120 centimeters tall and seven years old. Build and test is one of our favorite activities. It's also a great indoor area to escape the rain. Kids can build Lego race cars, test them on multiple tracks, and then race against the other kids. Ready, set, go! Haru won first place. Even our one-year-old enjoys digging through the bins of Legos. Ready to race again. Ready, set, go. Good job, Kaisho. Yay! Uh oh, how does this kick and butt? Woo! Kaisho! Woo! High five! Also located in imagination is the observation tower. Riders under 130 centimeters tall must be accompanied by an adult. It is enclosed with glass. Another one of our favorites is Lego Studios with 4D movies. If you're planning to watch one of the movies, I recommend checking the showtimes right away. We weren't able to find those online scanning the barcode, so we need to come here, see what time, so we can be here 15 minutes early. If it's too loud in there for our youngest, I'm going to bring him outside to the playground right across the way. Our eight-year-old has been asking and asking us to come to one of these movies. So today, on a rainy day, this is a perfect indoor activity to do. Are we getting rain done? The Duplo Playtown Playground is designed for the youngest members of the family. Inside Playtown is the Duplo Express. It's our four-year-old's favorite ride since she can ride it on her own without an adult.
Playtown is a good option for Escape in the Rain since it is completely covered. On the way out of imagination is the musical fountain. You can step on the squares to play music. Next up is Land of Adventure. The first ride is Dino Island. Riders must be at least 110 centimeters tall, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 130 centimeters tall. There are huge body dryers you can use after the ride for 10 ringgit. Lost Kingdom Adventure is an indoor ride. Riders must be at least 80 centimeters tall, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 100 centimeters tall. Beetle Bounce is another ride for young kids. Riders must be at least 90 centimeters tall. To ride alone, they must be at least 105. Pharaoh's Revenge is a fun play area, but it can be loud. There are no minimum height restrictions for this. Our one-year-old enjoys playing here, except for the loud noise. Tucked away behind Land of Adventure is Lego Ninjago World. The main attraction is Lego Ninjago the Ride. Riders must be at least 80 centimeters tall, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 120 centimeters tall. We took our one-year-old on this ride once, but it was too loud for him and it scared him. There are a few other things to see outside the ride, including Kai's spinners and Cole's rock climb. The final section of Legoland is Lego City, which is our favorite. First up, Lego City Airport. I thought our youngest could go on these planes since he's 80 centimeters, but he's not three years old, so he had to miss this one. Wow! Wow! Ah. For the Lego Rescue Academy, Riders must be at least 86 centimeters tall. To ride alone, they must be at least 120 centimeters tall. Jorg has a special technique for this one, where he helps both kids at once. We really like the shipyard playground. This is where our one-year-old plays while our older kids are at the driving schools. If you have kids in different age and height brackets like we do, it helps to find things near each other that they can all do at the same time. One adult watches our one-year-old at the playground, one adult accompanies our four-year-old, and sometimes our eight-year-old can ride alone. It would be nice to have one adult per child for times when each child needs an adult to accompany them. You can check online for the show times at City Stage. We're catching a 3 p.m. show before we leave. The movie we just watched was really fun. Across from the stage is Legoland Express Train. Sora didn't want to sit still and watch the show with everyone else, so we're taking the train ride instead. Driving school is for kids between 6 to 12 years old. This is one of our son's favorites. Junior driving school is for children 3 to 5 years old. Across from the driving school is the boating school. Who's driving this boat? It's harder. Okay, so it's this. Okay, we don't want to just run into everything, huh? It's not a bumper boat. <laughs> Riders must be at least 86 centimeters tall, accompanied by an adult. To ride alone, they must be at least 130 centimeters tall. Some parents were just staying in the boat so they could switch out and have another one of their children ride with them. It's time to end the day with a sweet treat from the fueling station, back at the beginning.
Just to be clear, this video wasn't filmed all in one day. It took us multiple visits to ride most of the rides and do most of the activities. Our annual passes have been worth it. Our family is traveling long term, so please subscribe for more tips on traveling with kids. Give us some thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.